In this video, we're going to talk about angular kinematic equations, also known as rotational motion equations. Now, remember, we have a set of linear kinematic equations that should be familiar. Sometimes there's four, sometimes there's five. Um, the most basic ones are to solve for velocity, position, uh, sometimes we say half of the initial plus the final velocity with time, and the final velocity is 2 times the acceleration times delta x plus the initial velocity squared. Okay, so these are the linear motion equations. Well, the rotational motion equations are just these same equations, but with their uh, rotational or angular analogs, meaning the rotational versions. So instead of v for velocity, we can put rotational eq here. Instead of v for velocity, we would use omega for the angular velocity. So the finer ang angular velocity is equal to the, not a, but alpha, angular acceleration with time, plus the initial angular velocity. Uh, the same for x. For x, we would use theta. So instead of position, we use angular position. It is half of the angular acceleration with time, plus the initial angular velocity, plus the initial, oh, sorry, there should be an x not there, plus the initial angular position. Uh, and then the same thing here, 1 half uh, omega plus omega naught times t. Ugh, how did I forget that in both? Well, I did. Anyway. Uh, and then omega squared equals 2 times fishy delta theta plus the initial angular velocity squared. Okay, so we have our rotational versions of these linear equations. So it's really helpful for you to write down these rotational equations somewhere for you. Because just like the linear motion equations, when you're solving a problem, you're going to look at the equations given and try to pick the correct one for the problem. Normally, you're just going to look at the information that's given to you and the thing that you want to find and then choose a correct equation. So let's do some examples. A roller skater starts from rest and rolls down a large hill. After 20 rotations, each wheel has an angular velocity of 10 pi radians per second. What is the angular acceleration? Okay, so let's start with g, right? The givens, the things that were given. Uh, we know that they start from rest. So that tells me the initial angular velocity, or omega naught, is 0. And also, after 20 rotations. Now, you can interpret this a couple of different ways. You could call this the change of angular position, so the angular displacement is 20 rotations. We'll call that 20 rots for right now. Or, you know, let's call this a rev, 20 revs. Whatever. Um, you also might want to say instead that the initial angular position is 0 and the final is that 20 revolutions. Either one is fine. I'm going to go with this since it fits my motion equations better. So initial angular position is 0, meaning the wheel just starts unrotated. And then theta, the final angular position is 20 rotations or revolutions. OK. Um, what else do I know? The final angular velocity of 10 pi radians. So omega, 10 pi. And I need to include the pi as part of the number because it's going to be 10 times 3.14. And that's radians per second. OK, and the thing that I want to find, the unknown, is angular acceleration. So fishy. <laughs> OK, so given this information uh, and this unknown, I'm going to think, what equation has all of these things in it? So I go back to my angular kinematic equations, <laughs> these here. And I think, what has all of the information that I need in it, the givens and the unknowns? And you'll notice that in this problem, I'm not given time, and I'm not asked to find time, which is an indication that I need to use the angular ain't got no time equation. So the equation I choose is the final angular velocity squared, omega squared, equals 2 times alpha delta theta. If you want to write delta theta, we can write it like this. Um, theta minus theta naught, remember that's what delta is, uh, and then plus the initial angular velocity squared. Okay, great. Um, so first, before I plug anything in, let's get rid of zeros. So these are my two zeros. I have no angular velocity. Congratulations, that term goes away. 
And since the initial angular velocity is zero, I can get rid of that and turn this whole thing into two alpha times just theta. I want to solve for the angular acceleration, so I need to get this by itself, which means I divide both sides by two theta. And I get my angular acceleration equation. So the angular acceleration is omega squared uh, divided by 2 times the angular position, 2 theta. Now, before I can actually use these numbers, though, I have to figure out what to do about this whole revolutions thing. Because in order to use it with an angular velocity of radians per second, I have to get my revolutions into radians. Um, so what I mean is I'm going to put 10 pi radians a second squared on top, but I can't put 2 times 20 here. I have to convert it. So remember our little way of doing like, um, it's kind of like a factor label type of thing. I would write this as 20 revolutions uh, and then set up a factor, so times. And I know in one revolution, there are two pi radians. So I can get rid of the revolutions. And now I know two, uh, 20 times 2, or 40 pi radians is my angular um, position. So I would put that here, 2 times 40 pi radians uh, in my number. OK, well, so how does this all simplify? Well, I don't even have to use pi in my calculator because it's on the top. Oh, you know what? That's not true. Ignore what I just said. Um, so if I want to simplify this, I can just go ahead and put this in my calculator. That's fine. But this would become uh, 10 times 10, so 100, and then pi squared, sorry, radian squared per second squared. And on the bottom, this is 80 times pi radians, uh, and that's it. Sorry, so that's why the pi's don't cancel out. Um, you can cancel out one of these pi's, which would give you 100 pi over 80. Uh, and then one of these radians cancels, so radians per second squared, which is the right unit. And you could simplify this. You'd want um, 10 over 8. Um, is You could do a good fraction with that. That's like 1 and a quarter. Uh, but if you want to put it in your calculator as a number, you can do that too. Let's do that just to be careful. So like 10 or 100 over 80. If you ever have trouble coming with fractions, you can always uh, do math frac. Right, 5 fourths. So I could write this 5 fourths pi, and that is a correct answer. Radians per second squared. Or if I want to do a number or a decimal, like maybe all my answers are in decimals, then I can just do 100 times pi divided by um, 80, which would be 3.92, uh, which you could also do 5 times pi right, divided by 4. And it gives you the same answer, so 3.92. So either of those answers is good, 3.92 radians per second squared. They both get you the same thing. All right, let's do another problem. A remote control car motor has an angular acceleration of 2 pi radians per second squared and starts from rest. How much time does it take for the wheels of the car to reach an angular speed of 16 radians per second? All right, let's start with part A. Okay, so... What does it give me? It gives me the angular acceleration, so that's fishy, right? Alpha, 2 radians per second squared from rest um, tells me the initial angular velocity, or omega naught, is 0 radians per second. And, um, you know, we're not going to need this now, but we could think of the initial angular position as 0. Uh, but we're not going to need that until part B, so let's, let's not do that yet. Okay, so alpha is 2, omega naught is 0. Um, how much time does it take to reach an angular speed of 16? So that 16 is omega, the final angular velocity. And it wants me to find t. Okay, so now I have these four things, and I want to think what equation has alpha, omega, omega naught, and t. I look at my four equations, and oh, this equation has alpha, omega, omega naught, and t. So I choose it. Okay, so angular velocity, final angular velocity is the angular acceleration with time squared plus the initial angular velocity. Get rid of anything that's zero, which is omega naught, so I get rid of that. Boom. 
and I need to solve for t, so that means I divide both sides by alpha. And I get t is equal to the angular velocity over the angular acceleration, or alpha, I'm sorry, omega over alpha. And I don't need to convert anything because everything's in radians. So 16 radians per second divided by 2 radians per second squared. The radians cancel, one of the seconds cancel, and I'm going to get 16 over 2, or 8, 1 over 1 over seconds, which is just a second. So the answer is 8 seconds. Yay! Okay, let's do part B. Okay, so for part B, um, how many rotations does each wheel make in this time? That means I'm going to look at the angular position, and I want to find the final angular position. Now, I know that the initial angular position is going to be 0, or if you prefer, you could just write delta theta equals and try and find that. It would be the same thing. But I like saying the initial angular position is 0, um, just because it gives me an idea of I start at 0 and then I reach a certain number of rotations. Okay, so what problem or what equation can we use to find theta? Well, now that I know the time and all this other information, I can actually use any equation that has theta in it, because I know all of this stuff. Um, probably the most common equation to use is theta equals 1 half alpha t squared plus omega naught t plus initial angular pos uh, position, so theta naught. Uh, again, you can use any of the equations now that you have found the amount of time, but this one is what I would have to use, or what I'm, what I'm going to use, just because it's very common. Okay, so let's get rid of things that are zero. These two things are zero, so those two terms go away. And I'm left with the angular position, theta, is equal to half the angular acceleration, alpha, times t squared. Now, I want to find the angular position. So theta is the variable I'm looking to find, which means I don't have to rearrange anything. I just need to plug stuff in. So 2 radians per second squared times 8 seconds, the whole thing squared. Um, and that's going to give me, uh, what, just 1. Half of 2 is 1, so 1 radian per second squared times 8 times 8 is 64, right? So 64 seconds squared, seconds squared, squared cancel out, and I get 1 times 4 is 64 radians. Boom! Now, that is a final answer, but it's technically not what the problem is asking for, because it wants you to know how many rotations. So, to figure out how many rotations there are from these radians, I have to do a factor label. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go reverse. 64 radians, I know that in one rotation, or I like to say revs, one revolution, uh, there are two pi radians. So this gets rid of the radians, and now to figure out the revolutions, I'm going to do 64 over 2 pi. Um, and it's in this case, it's kind of silly to leave pi in the number, because when I think about rotations, I don't think about rotations in terms of pi. I think about like just how many rotations did I make. So when I put this in my calculator, I'm going to do 64 divided by. Now please wake up. Oh my goodness, hear this thing that I have to say. It's so important. You're going to mess this up all the time. I swear to you. I can't write 64 divided by 2 pi. Why can't I do that? Well, when you tell your calculator pi, it automatically assumes that you want to multiply. And so really what you're doing is telling your calculator to do this. 64 divided by 2, and then multiply that answer by pi. I'm sorry, <coughs> 32 times pi is that number, 105. That's not what we want. Instead, what we want is 64 divided by parentheses 2 pi. You have to do this, or you're going to get an incorrect answer. So when I do 64 divided by 2 pi in parentheses, I don't get 100.5. I get a, a 10.18. So we'll say 10.2. 10.2 revolutions or rotations. So it's really important. Anytime that you're using pi, in the bottom with another number, you have to put in parentheses in your calculator or you're going to get the problem wrong. 
Okay, great. Um, this video is done.